In this episode, we leave Nalu Station and make our way up to Warra Station, an absolutely stunning part of Western Australia. We explore the station and the surrounding beaches and coastline. It is a moving day and we're all packed up, ready to go. We are hitched up. Holly is a hitched up, but we have one thing to do before we can hit the road. Another beach rescue. So Chris has taken the Max tracks down to the beach to help those guys out. And I honestly can't tell you another um, trip that we've been on where the Max tracks have come off the roof so many times. Literally every campsite we've been to, we've had to get them down to help someone out. So it's a good thing we've got so many. You're taking your Max tracks for another walk? Yeah, they just got old mate out. So easy with Max tracks, aren't they? Rightio, we're here. We're at the turn off for Exmouth, heading up that way, and we are pumped, hey? So, Southern Ningaloo Reef, which we've done 90% of this anyway. We pulled over to have a look at this sign, and we're like, oh, we've been to Quabba Station, we've been to Red Bluff. We didn't do three mile, did we? Did yeah, we three, three mile, mile is where we were, Ningaloo. Oh. Nalu. Nalu. We three did mile, Nalu, yep. Nalu we Station, Nalu, yep. Well, we went to Nalu Station, and now we're heading to Warura Station. Yep. Ah, uh, pronounced Warra. Oh, Warra. There you go. It's not Warura Station, it's Warra Station. It's like Nalu's, not Gnaralu. It's yeah. Nalu. So, yeah, so, Warra Station. So, if we look on the map here, if you want to look here. So, we've done Red Bluff. Oh, yeah, okay. Done Red Bluff. Yeah. We've gone all the way up Tombstone, Three Mile, all the way up to Nalu Bay, which is up there. We've done all that. So, now we are at Warra. We're heading to Warra now, which is here. We have two information boards, a little bit exciting. This one's all about the Ningaloo Reef and it says here it is the largest fringing reef um, in Australia and it is one of the largest on earth and unlike most other reefs you can actually access it just by stepping off the beach and we've been noticing that. You just put your snorkel on and even in this much water, like I was getting in and snorkeling and Chris was laughing at me but the fish were literally right there that close to the beach. So home to whale sharks and it's actually whale shark season right now so that's a little bit exciting. Manta rays, turtles, wildflowers, humpback whales, all sorts of things to see in this area. Are we going to do whale shark diving? Oh absolutely. 100% we are aren't we? I'm not at all freaked out about that. We haven't booked it though. Oh yeah maybe next year. If we can't get in again because we're coming back next year, if we, we haven't booked, if we can't get in, it's fine, we'll just do it next year. But, Forest yeah. Station, we are here. So again, we're gonna point out too, you don't need a caravan and all that. They've got all types of stuff here. You've got luxury villas, you've got the homestead you can stay out. You've got little cottages, you've got the Stockman's Lodge. Don't worry about it, if you don't have a setup, just still get out of here, get out of here. Let's go, come on. We've got about 20 k's, I think, down the dirt road. Yeah, 23, I think it said. Yeah, sweet. All right. And what does that sign behind you say? Um, Coastal campgrounds full, so make sure you book your staff before you come in. Right, so as we just mentioned, we've got about 20 odd k's, 22 k's of dirt road to get there. Um, normally I'd deflate the tyres, but the track looks pretty cool right now. Um, I'll just dump them on a need to know sort of basis as we head down if it starts getting pretty corrugated. Then I'll drop them, but as it is, we'll maintain road pressures and, and see how we go. As you can see, it's pretty smooth, but I can't imagine it staying like that so all right i'm gonna get out and dump some tires we've got about five k's down the road and it's getting a little corrugated so time to let some pressures out um, to save the van and everything else in your truck just dump them a little bit just to yeah cushion it just a tiny bit we pulled over and usually when you pull over on a dirt road you have to wait for a little while for the dust to settle we had to wait for ages for the dust to settle here it's insane give you a little bit of an idea of the corrugation it's not too bad but bad enough to need a little bit of High pressure dropping action. Yeah, I'm just dumping the van down to about 35 psi. I might do the truck as well, just a little bit, but I'll suss it out as I get to it. That's about 35 there. Yeah, and about 32 there, so that's about right. I might just dump a tiny bit more out. I'll put them down about 32, keep them about even. And then once I'm inside with that trailering up on the Silverado, these sensors are hooked into my car system so I can keep an eye on the temperatures of the tyres as well, as well as the pressures, so perfect. And it gives it all green and gives it an okay. As soon as the tyre starts getting fairly hot, it'll turn orange and then red to let me know that there's some sort of issues, but you can see with the pressures on the screen anyway. But as you can see from the trailing up here, if we go into here, we've got our connections, 
we've got a checklist that we can do. We've got the trailer, so it's the ADU Titanium Caravan. Then we've got some settings. If we go back to here and we go to our tyres, you can see, see it's saying it's orange and it's a tyre status. So it's saying that the pressures are low. Well, we know that because we've just dumped them a bit and then it's giving me the degrees of them as well. So as long as we keep an eye on that, it should be happy days. And then we obviously have our maintenance too. We can set maintenance schedules up. And then we have um, your vehicle as well. So it'll give me my average fuel consumption and then my transmission um, temperatures as well. But if we stick it on that and just watch that, and then I watch the one on the truck as well, if I go back to there, and I'll just keep an eye on those. But these are, I haven't dumped these tyres at all, but we'll just keep an eye on that one to make sure they're not getting too hot. And it should be totally fine. So let's keep going. Then. It is the next morning, it is a stunning day. We are going to get up and we're gonna go explore. Um, we've got a heap of tracks running north and a heap of tracks running south a little bit, just on the coastline, which is only about, I don't know, like half a K here, not even. Heaps of cool campgrounds, we're gonna suss those out too because we could potentially take our van there from here. Not sure if we're gonna yet, but we will suss it out. We're gonna have an epic day, we're gonna just have a good old explore and have a freaking good old time. So what do you reckon? We found ourselves at a crossroad. We literally did not know which way to go. <laughs> Left, right, straight ahead. We've decided to go straight ahead. We've come across this sign. So Stevens, we heard that that's actually a good spot to camp, um, but we're gonna go and have a look, check it out. Someone messaged us this morning and said Maggie's was their favorite beach here. So we're definitely gonna check that out as well. Um, and 14 mile is where we're camping next time. So I don't know if we're gonna actually get that far today. Probably not, but this is where we're headed now. All right, we've just come across a waste transfer station. So we got the bins up here and we got a dump point. That's literally not even 500 meters from Warra. So um, yeah, just take note of that guys. It's um, yeah, bins and dump point. <laughs> Stephen's camp is A grade and um, 
To all the people that say you can't get a van there, 100% you can get a van there, no worries. If you've got a decent tow, tow tug, um, not a problem at all. A couple of sharp corners, but I think we could do it in our, in our Silverado and 22 foot six van, easily. Um, yeah, epic spot, mate. The reef here is stunning. There's a bit of surf right here now. I'm bummed out my boards. Yeah, there's heaps of boats on the reef just there, having a good old fish. There's stand-up paddle boards. Right, yeah, next stop on the list is Ells Beach, and this place is another absolute stunner. Look at this over here, the turquoise bay in here is absolutely beautiful. So they recommend this as an A-grade fishing spot, but mainly just beach fishing because there's um, they don't allow boats or launching of boats around here at all. Apparently there's a heap of turtles that, that come around here as well. You definitely can get caravans in here, mate. This is definitely, this is not a problem at all to, to get a big van in here. Stunning, mate. This coastline is epic. I'm so in love with this area. We'll just keep cruising up north a little bit more, see what's up that way, then we'll head back down and keep heading... Um, yeah, keep heading around and sussing this place out. Okay, so I stand corrected about 500 metres south of where I uh, just filmed that spot where the caravans are. You can actually launch a boat here. So there we go. Recreational zone. Um, there's a bit of a, there's a ramp coming down um, straight onto the beach where you can launch. And it's a really safe little zone to, to um, launch from as well. This is sick. Look at that water. Are you loving this? Yeah. Like, how much are you loving like, it? Like a lot. Like the colour like, of this water is really, really nice. And having a boat would be amazing. <laughs> like saying. good enough to move here? What do you reckon? No, definitely not good enough to move here. Oh. But I do like it. Choosing gratitude is free. chilling for a couple of hours at the lagoon this place is stunning too it just gets better and better and better and better and better doesn't it how good is this i am you loving this to stop here for a little while <laughs> absolutely this yeah magic. we're gonna chill get a bit of sun rays get some food in our bellies have a swim and um yeah just chill because this is just soaking it in nice nutritious um lunch hey the croskets with veggie bite or peanut butter here is the debate do you put butter and peanut butter oh hell yeah oh uh, i don't i'm in two minds i'm running veggie mite for a little bit bugger it what do you reckon aussie 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 yeah 
To all you Americans out there, mate, you don't know what you're missing out on, I tell you. Actually, we've got South Africans and all sorts of people that watch this channel. So yeah, good point. Hold, Have any of you guys... Hold it up, babe. Show me your jar of Vegemite. Have any of you overseasians tasted good old Vegemite? Now, can you sing me the song? No. We're happy little Vegemites, as bright as bright can be. We'll all enjoy our Vegemite for breakfast, lunch and tea. That's it. <laughs> Show me how you spread it, because that's where people go wrong. Yeah. I am... Are you a light spreader of Vegemite, or are you just cake it on like... That was uh, the mistake, because I grew up overseas and people would spread in the US the Vegemite like they did peanut butter. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. This is how you do it. Smear. Rookies do it the other way. You smear it on. Mm. Oh, it's actually good. Here you go now. So where'd you go? <laughs> where'd you go? Oh, veggie. Mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, it's really good. Tons and tons of butter. <laughs> is there? <laughs> I've gone back to peanut butter and I'm loving it. It's both good. You can't go wrong. No. We've just spotted what we think is a manta ray, possibly. Um, so Chris has just flicked the drone up. He's sending it out there now to have a look. doesn't scare him. Woohoo! Let's see if I can get in there with him. That'll be epic! Oh. There he is! There he is! There he is! So close to him! No, oh, he's going out a little bit. <laughs> oh. I hope I got him on this. But as I came in, he just kept pulling out a little bit, so I couldn't get near him. I could hear you from here. You scared him away, I reckon, with your... Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. Look. Oh, he wants to be friends. That was insane. That just... Um, that's the highlight of the day. Giant manta rays um, while we're just sitting here chilling out. I, bummer I couldn't get out to him. Every time I dove into the water, he would sort of pull out a little bit. Spewing, if I had my snorkeling gear or my... my goggles and all that I probably could have swam out a little bit more with my flippers and stuff and that's just made the day hasn't it mate come on watching you come run on. down that beach like Hasselhoff holding your camera like Hasselhoff I am like him aren't I that's he right. was running up and down the beach following the rain yeah. and getting in the water and getting out again yeah bit of a bummer he was a little bit scared of me um like, yeah. he was like Woohoo! <laughs> yeah I probably shouldn't have been screaming so much as well that probably didn't help the situation but anyway we'll go back to camp have a good feed and Get the 14 mile tomorrow. It would seem the road is closed. That's where we were gonna go, but I think now we have to go all the way back to the highway. Uh-oh. That ended quickly. We've gone about 10 k's up the road to turn and head north, um, 10 to 14 mile, and we've got that. Road closed. Um, that means we're gonna have to go back out, all the way out this track, back out to the freeway and head north, right north, and then come back down and head south, I think. But um, yeah, well, that's the freaking joys, hey? We could do, like I said, we could have done the coast road, but they reckon it's really tight in some sections and I don't wanna go scratching up the caravan. Um, so, oh yeah, well, it's gonna be a bit of a detour, but that's all right. At least we'll get there eventually, hey? Yew. We find ourselves at a familiar sign, Warra Station, but this is um, the more northerly track in, and this should take us to 14 mile, we hope. So we're gonna come down along here, and then in this way. So this is the freeway here, as last time we went along that road at the bottom. And once again, we have to stop the tire set. Yo, 
Uh, so we have arrived at 14 mile. Um, I think we need to check in, do we? Yes. So we need a site number 12. Yep. We've got, we've got two adults, zero children, zero infants. The date is the 5th of the 6th. Want to know what day we're leaving? Is it three nights? Three nights, yeah. So seven. Yep. Toilet. Oh, a nice little love letter there. Yes. And you have to have your own toilet. Yep. And fire pit. So yes and yes. Yep. And look at that water, by the way. <laughs> They didn't tell us that it was going to be like this, so we had to book and just hope we could fit, and we clearly don't. So Chris is trying to, yeah. We were praying when we booked that we would fit into the site because it's really hard to figure out what the sites are going to be like just by the online booking system, which needs a lot of work. We've said that before, the online booking system is terrible here. Um, so hopefully Chris can get us in this site. I have faith in him. He's like the best caravan parker and reverser I've ever come across in my life. So I do have faith, but he's not very happy about the situation. <laughs> set up and the sky is getting really dark outside the winds picking up so Chris has put the chairs away that he just got out done a load of washing but it looks like I'm gonna be hanging it out inside because those clouds are getting darker the winds are picking up um, I don't know if it's actually gonna rain or not but it's super windy right now perfect day to get jobs done so Chris has got the fun job of cleaning the compost toilet and I've got the fun job of editing. Well I was correct in predicting a little storm it's been raining for a while now it's still pretty windy the clouds are still grey don't know how long it's gonna last but I think I'm gonna stay inside look at that Eek. much safer in here Day two of 14 mile and um, yeah, let's just say the weather is average. Uh, we haven't had bad weather for weeks, so I'm not gonna complain at all. It's um, still stunning. We've got a bit of gray cloud over here. We've had some wind and we've had a little bit of rain all night. Uh, wind is up heaps. The ocean isn't too great at all. Um, we're not gonna sit in the van today though. We're gonna go for a drive. We'll head north to Coral Bay up along the coast road there. Um, check out some beautiful places along there and just check out Coral Cove itself. Um, oh, Coral Bay, sorry. Coral Bay, the little township, about 20 k's or 15 or 20 k's north of where we are now at 14 miles. So we'll just go for a bit of a drive and I'm sure there's a heap of places we can have a look on the oh, way. Look how far the ocean came up last night with the storm surge. Just look at that. Right up to their awning, they've had to do a little moat there. See, look at that.
So we've made it to Turtle Rock. It is very, very windy. The waves are insane. It's such a high tide. It was a really high tide last night and the moon is full, so that's probably why. But this place, wow, even with the crazy weather, it kind of gives it a bit of a mood. I'm liking it. Man, as you can just see, this weather is insane. The swell's picking up. Even when this wind and storm does sort of go, the um, the water's still gonna be pretty average for a little bit. It'd be murky and all, you know, sooted up and stuff from all the swell, but that's all right. It's just part of what we do. Check this out. Let's keep moving on. along the dirt road and out in the distance on a hill we saw a whole bunch of piles of rocks so we pulled over and this is what we found Right, so we've just jumped on top of the first hill and we have a big mark as you can see right here. Um, this is interesting because if we jump up, let me just jump up here. Sorry about the wiggling around. So here's the first big marker here. It's literally massive. And if you look over there, we have another two. Very cool. I'm guessing they are yeah, navigation markers. Um, so we can guide ships, I reckon, straight into the gap in the reef over here, maybe? I don't know. If you guys know what these are, um, please leave a comment below, man. We'd love to know. Like I said, I'm guessing they're, they're shipping markers.
are lost in the sand dunes. We thought going for a bit of an adventure through the sand dunes would be fun, but... An adventure? We don't know where we're going. We're so lost, it's not funny. <laughs> we're, no. we're lost and the roads kind of, well they're not really roads, they're oh, tracks. They're getting more and more corrugated. We're just going up dunes, down, down dunes, around corners and just yeah, look. over more corrugation. There you, go, look. Oh, you can see where we've gone here, look at this. So the tracks are marked with a little, these ones here. And we're sort of off it and along, they're all sand dunes. Sort of off it, we're nowhere near so, it. So look, I don't know where we're going. I guess we're gonna link up to that one. And the orange line, the purple line is where we've got to get to, so. Well, it's only quarter to two, so we've got plenty of time to get the Coral Bay before the amp hole closes. All right, let's keep drawing black squiggles. Look at it all. <laughs> yoo <-hoo! laughs> Rightio, so all that dune driving, we've ended up at Five Fingers, which I've been pumped to come and see. Um, there we go, we can see right here. Yeah, we've ended up five fingers. Um, yeah, a bit of a bummer. Like I said, it's a bit of a windy day, so it's not that nice, but apparently this is the bomb. Um, yeah, bummer. Wasn't sure which way to go though, because it kept saying one way, and it was heading back towards the beach, back where we came from. But I'm guessing we just tuck on the beach here, and then follow the beach all the way back up to Coral Bay. So, well, fingers crossed that is anyway. The, um, the overlander isn't really helping us that much here at the moment which is a little odd but oh I can see heaps of tracks that run along so I'm guessing we're going to be right and have a look. Here we go, you can see all the tracks now. So we definitely can't go that way. We've got no choice, I think we have to go that way. So there we are there. Rightio, so we have to jump on the beach now, so you happy with that? Beach driving? Yep. I love beach driving. Well, hopefully that gets us to um, Coral Bay. What do you reckon? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometime today would be good. I don't want to go back to where we came from. Sure you do. Yeah. We can't. It says one way here. Oh, that's true too. <laughs> Righto. adventure it was absolutely stunning the scenery the landscape the sand dunes the ocean all the places that we saw um, unintentionally actually just because we went up a sand dune that we found and now we're at the boat ramp and Chris is just putting a little bit of air in the tires he's actually chatting <laughs> to a guy up there who's also driving a Duramax um, then he's gonna put air in the tires and I'm just gonna wander around and have a look because this place is stunning. We're really close to Coral Bay now. If you got the time, I'd like to stay a while. Do you remember what I said last time we met? Would you like to move a little closer now? Well, here we are in Coral Bay and Chris is hangry, so we've stopped in at Finn's Cafe. Grab a bite to eat. Well, we are back at the caravan. It's been another epic day of exploring. We're just going to chill here and watch this amazing uh, sunset. The uh, winds are dying off slowly. It's been a strong southwesterly for, for a couple of days now. It is dying off and it is swinging to the southeast. So I think we'll have some nice weather tomorrow. So we'll just chill out here, go do some diving, um, go do some fishing and that type of stuff. But mate, this place delivers. I've said it a thousand times. And I'm going to say it again. WA is just delivering. It's just insane. So look at that. As 
Well, that was a long video, but you survived to the end if you're watching this, hey? Yeah. What do you reckon? Congratulations <laughs> on making it through. There was a lot to see. Yeah. Um, but it is time. It's time. It's time for the survival first aid uh, giveaway. What do you reckon? Yep, absolutely. I reckon let's, let's punch it on, bring it on. So this week we are going to give away a $50 voucher as we do every week. And at yep. the end of the month, we give away one $250 outdoor bundle, which is made up of two kits, the snake bike kit and the family first aid kit. Pretty so, cool kit. Pretty cool is. kit. Very so cool. to enter, all you have to do is? Um, tell us your favorite part of the video. Come mm -hmm. on. Leave a Come comment on. below and tell us your favorite part of the yeah. video. Bonus points if you sound good looking too. Yes. Well, that was, yes, we found that out, haven't we? <laughs> um, as always, there have been heaps of really cool comments. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I've actually selected two and I've told Chris he has to choose and he's not going to choose again. So we'll see how it's we go with It's difficult. This. They're all too good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to announce the $50 winner and then I'm going to do a runner up because I quite liked the second comment. So the $50 winner for this week is Michelle Stewart ZY5FX. Gotta love these YouTube usernames. Yeah. Congratulations, Michelle. Congratulations. You have won yourself a $50 voucher and the comment was, great episode guys. We follow you every week and watch you religiously. We are planning our trip in our caravan for 2024 and Nalu and blowholes are definitely on the list. Steep point point also on the way back. You guys crack me up with your adventures. What a great team you pair make. You make traveling in a caravan look so easy and doable. <laughs> Keep entertaining us every week. Safe travels. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, we'll see you out there, I reckon. Yeah, it's not always easy. It's not always doable. We, we try and... Yeah. <laughs> we make it look good. But it is good. Do you know how hard it is living? <laughs> now, I'm going to read the, the runner-up comment. And yep. I, I like this one. So good on you. She did call me Marion, and I do blame Chris for that because he calls me Mariam all the time. Can but you my get name, on with it, Mariam? My name is Miriam. M I R I A M. Miriam. Miriam. Good on you, Miriam, for getting out there and scuba diving because you're doing it for me too. I am scared of sharks and cannot stand a mask on my face. So what you video is what I will see. I also think I'm too old for it now. Keep up the videos. I got a lot out of the fire pit and beads set up for the roast. It looked oh, yum. Awesome. You're so, never too old. Never get into too it. Old. And I do like hearing this because there are plenty of times when I just. Yeah. don't want to get in the water because I literally am very scared still yeah. and Chris has been encouraging me telling me that um, it's good for me to do and he's proud of me but it's also encouraging other people to get out and give it a go as well yeah, and um, inspiring people and for those who really can't get in the water they do see what I see so I'm happy to continue trying yep <laughs> and um, yeah I just appreciate the comment so yep. thank you so much thank you so much for all the comments all the comments are amazing yeah. we thank you guys so much for supporting us watching our videos we're, we're absolutely pumped and it, it's what keeps us going it does it's pretty cool yeah, yeah. Very so, so if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you do subscribe to the channel because that goes a long way to supporting our content creation yep. and um, of course leave us the comments because we absolutely love it so thank you so much guys and we'll see you next time adios